Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Esan Garoshidagi, for short, they call me Dr. G. Uh, this is my new channel and my only personal channel as a psychologist. And I would like to introduce you to a more or less introductory video of what we will be covering here. This whole channel will be about healthy relationships. In fact, I would like to take it to the next level and introduce you to a journey that can take your relationship to a very blissful relationship and uh, where you can uh, experience a very deep level of satisfaction and contentment in your both romantic relationship with your partner as well as the close relationships that you have with your uh, loved ones. I am a clinical psychologist with a specialty of couples and sex therapy as well as addiction and uh, therefore I have dedicated my, over the past decade uh, most of my private practice as well as um, other types of work that I do such as teaching and uh, seminars and educa educating uh, the public about ways of improving our relationships and uh, really achieving that level of uh, happiness and contentment. So I would like to share all this uh, information and wealth of research that is available with you to help you uh, to take, take your relationship to the next level. Now today, the, what I would like to start with is a very quick introduction into the organization and functionality of a relationship. And uh, then we will also create a series of in-depth videos about each of these topics and chapters. The organization and functionality of a relationship more or less is like the anatomy and physiology of an organism. Uh, you know, a relationship is not much different really in terms of uh, our ability to master that level of happiness and contentment within the relationship is predicated upon our understanding and knowledge and insight into that anatomy and physiology. But uh, you use that word anatomy physiology with more organisms. In this case, with a relationship, what I would like to use a corollary is the organization instead of anatomy and functionality instead of physiology. So. Now, from the get-go, before we get to that organization and functionality, I would like to bring up, as you may see on this slide that is provided on the screen, uh, a core concept, which is diversity and core trajectories. Uh, we will get into that in, later on in a more in-depth video, but I want to get your attention first to the entire problem and solution within relationships centering on the issue of diversity. People are different in general because of that uniqueness that each person, each partner brings into a relationship. We co-create the problem as well as the opportunity for a solution. However, generally we are not skilled and knowledgeable about that uh, type of source and uh, root causes that lead to the problem as well as uh, the solution itself, the opportunities for solutions. Um, because we are most of the time kind of distracted and get sidetracked by a lot of stuff that is going on on a daily basis in a, pa past, uh, in, in a fast paced world that we live in that uh, is hard to really allowing us to, uh, to slow down and uh, take a look at the details of why relationships work and some relationships don't work. Uh, we get so much lost into um, all kinds of distractions and um, that's why we really don't pay attention to that. So what I want to do is first of all get our attention to the idea that uh, the reason that two people usually get into a relationship and really don't uh, ultimately find a happy place within the relationship 
centers around those core trajectories of divergence and convergence. What I mean by that is at times our diverse uh, personalities, they come together, converge, there is a match, there is a, a fitting uh, reflection between these two uh, different unique personalities and at times they diverge from each other simply because of their uniqueness, because of the fact that factually they're just different, pragmatically, practically, they're complete opposite from each other. So it's almost like two uh, trajectories spiraling in and out of each other, uh, at, at times meeting and fitting each other's sides and at times completely opposite directions. That Those are the, the realities of the interactional relationship between two people that really create everything else. The second part is the organization. When you look at the slide, you will see four subsections, type, purpose, and reason. That is part of an organization of a relationship, uh, meaning what kind of a relationship, what type is the kind of relationship you're getting into. Could be a romantic relationship, business relationship, um, a um, contractual relationship for a specific purpose that we are getting into. Uh, there are different types of relationships. I mean, most of our focus is going to be on romantic relationships, however. And then the purpose and reason why people, two people got together. Those are very important. People have different um, goals, different purposes, different reasons to get into a relationship. We'll get into those subtypes and sub-reasons. The second bullet point is structure, hierarchy, and boundaries. In order to again understand the organization of a relationship, we have to understand the, that type of a structure and the hierarchy and the boundaries. There, there's a lot going on, for instance, in terms of the way people uh, relate to each other uh, in terms of their, of, you know, being a leader or being a follower. That by itself is a subtype of the hierarchy or the boundaries, meaning how much of uh, their private space, if you will, in individual space, do they respect uh, within their relationship? How much leeway, how much power, how much freedom do they have feeling as a unique individual and uh, maintaining their identity while being in a relationship? We will get into the, the depths of those. And then the uh, third bullet point are roles. People actually uh, fulfill certain roles, such as, let's say, the, uh, pro being a provider, being a source of comfort, being a um, uh, source of attraction, uh, being a caregiver, if you will. Uh, there's many unique roles, and a lot of these are initially uh, uh, in a subconscious space. People really don't are not quite aware of those. It really turns out after a while what those roles are and people kind of come to discover them. Uh, and it is good to know about them ahead of time uh, rather than just kind of, you know, taking the journey and then after a few months or years find out that uh, specific role that we have either stepped into or are facing in uh, interacting with our partner. And then last bullet point within the organization category are forces and dynamics that create an intra-psychic reality versus interpersonal reality, meaning there are certain things that uh, happen within us that keep us in a relationship and at times also create a resistance toward the relationship versus um, you know, other forces that actually also at times, uh, you know, cr uh, kind of pull us toward our partner that are outside of our immediate awareness and sometimes within our awareness and then forces that actually pull us away from our, our partner. Uh, and that ha they have to do with what happens between people rather than within a person. Uh, the third item on the list, as you can see, is functionality. So. When it comes to functionality, what we want to focus on are number one, or A, is sharing of limited resources. We will get into the details of what that means. You know, when two people 
come into a relationship, what happens is that inevitably they will have to cut their um, whole or available entirety of their resources into more or less half. At times it's a little bit more than half, but generally that is really what we are facing. You know, our, our singledom, having lived as a single person where we used to have almost all, if not all, of our resources, including time, money, energy, um, uh, decision-making, and other type of stuff, you know, psychic energy, focus, attention, um, capacity to uh, appreciate and care or love, and everything else that really comprise our individuality, uh, that singledom has come to an end. We, when we enter into relationship, we have either consciously or subconsciously negotiated a new deal in which we have agreed to share many of these experiences. So our attention now is going to be split between uh, stuff that I used to do individually and now uh, stuff that are important to me within a relationship in uh, relation to another person. Um, money has to be split, both in terms of earning it as well as spending it. Um, time has to be split. If I used to just have 24 hours a day and spend it the way I needed to, and um, you know there was no reason for me to really spend a lot of that time based on someone else's schedule, needs, expectations, desires, that has changed. Now I have to really take into consideration a lot of those needs, expectations, desires of another person, another partner who is now sharing my life with me. And therefore it creates some kind of a conflict of interest and so forth and so on. You get the idea. Um, B, uh, the point B is uh, dealing with the conflict of existence and experience. So beyond resources, we have to deal with a very realistic um, you know, phenomenon, which is that two unique people coming into a relationship, they bring a lot of, as I have listed here, values, needs, expectations, desires, norms, um, etc., that are quite opposite at times. And, at th and, and that goes back to that um, trajectories that I mentioned, the convergence and divergence of of the uh, realities of two unique people coming together, they will have to again to somehow negotiate these differences. Um, you know, people uh, may certainly have different needs most of the time. At times, they may have similar needs. Um, to give you a very rudimentary example, uh, you know, uh, people are not hungry at the same time. Uh, individuals have different. Um, levels of you know diet and hunger and, and hygiene they have uh, different needs in, in terms of their sleep cycle they uh, have uh, different uh, tastes and preferences and all of those generally have to be negotiated but it really creates a constant conflict At, and a lot of times people have to just have, have to learn to somehow to automatically uh, and quickly, you know, come to terms and, and get along with these differences. But uh, really, it's not the majority of time that we are concerned with where things are peaceful. It's those very infrequent times of clashes and conflicts that actually create a pattern of dissatisfaction and discomfort and displeasure that then becomes quite toxic in a relationship and grows as a, almost like cancerous a problem and then affects the entire relationship over time that we are interested in and so we will get into this in depth furthermore. And then C is the, as far as part of the again, category of functionality of a relationship that we need to pay attention to is what skills and deficits do people bring in to negotiate A and B. A lot of times there are uh, certain abilities as well as disabilities that people have uh, or skills and deficits that people bring in into a relationship and we need to take a look at that to again give a very quick example would be someone who comes in 
with you know a high level intelligence let's say and, uh, and a skill set in let's say financial management that's great that's fantastic but then at the same time they may also bring a little bit of let's say a type A personality into their relationship so even though they are uh, quite astute in achieving certain financial goals in their life it comes at a toll it uh, the expense is that they may also be overly uh, productive to a sense that they are also missing out and neglecting other areas of their relationship um, in order to really balance the, the load and the pressure that they have due to that financial responsibility but then they are not quite astute or effective in uh, taking care of certain responsibilities that they have at home for instance this is just a very you know 30,000 foot type of an example Again, quite rudimentary example. We will get into many uh, more examples to help out uh, understanding this type of you know functionality and being able to negotiate that better. The the third concept that we need to understand are the differences between phases and stages. A lot of people don't pay attention to that. That you know, uh, regardless of the organization and function and functionality of the. Uh, uh, concepts that we talked about uh, within a relationship, a relationship actually is developmental. It grows over time. It goes through certain phases and stages. So, and we will get into into what those are. But here, what I would like to uh, make a distinction of is the difference between a phase and a stage. A stage, I would say, is something that is more or less universal across all relationships and. And that is due to basically chronology. Uh, you know, the the longer uh, two people uh, are together, the 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 more predictable certain uh, uh, events become uh, that occur within the relationship. Such as, let's say, uh, you know, a young couple comes together, and the first stage, more or less, is let's say, uh, you know, dating. That's that's. Mm, paramount and that's uh, universal nobody can jump into a very intimate romantic relationship without actually going through a dating stage so that is a static it is a uh, per, you know, um, constant that doesn't change over time every couple has to go through a dating stage and then Right after that, there is more or less a kind of a mating stage, if you will, where intimacy and romance develops. You have a honeymoon stage that, uh, and again, honeymoon is not just getting out of town and going somewhere and coming back. But it's more the stage of this, um, I would say, uh, high level of affection and romancing that goes on that almost blinds people, uh, but at the same time is necessary to form a bond that uh, lasts more or less forever and then after that uh, you know you have other stages we will go in depth and in a separate video but those are very distinct specific uh, constant stages that don't change over time and all the way through our to the end of time more or less or end of our journey together as a couple um, and then phases would be certain things that people may or may not go through depending on certain characteristics such as again there are certain what we, what I would call a vertical phase which is more of a growth within a person a person may for instance go through depression so not every couple goes through that not every um, you know relationship may face a phase like depression or high level of anxiety and so forth or let's say a financial uh, detrimental event or anything else that is a phase that a relationship goes through and it may last a few hours a few days a few months a few years you don't know and it usually has to do more internally with uh, within a person uh, or within two people who come together or externally within certain situational factors and or a horizontal I would say um, phase which would be due to relationship changes there may be Again, at times, certain things happening that uh, affect the relationship. For instance, let's say a, a, an affair. You know, that could be a phase that the 
couple goes through, uh, a, it may be present in some relationships, but it doesn't have to be present in all relationships. And then they go through that phase, and hopefully they come out successfully, master that, and become uh, stronger together. Lastly, the outcome of a relationship really is what people are interested in, which is the impact of relational experience that they have with another person on their own level of happiness. That will determine more or less the level of contentment and satisfaction that a person has uh, in kind of judging the quality of their relationship and deciding to continue that journey with another person or stop and kind of separate. These were important characteristics of how relationships work. I wanted you to uh, uh, watch this video before you move on to the rest of the videos where we will talk in depth and bring up all kinds of examples. Thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned and leave us some comments uh, in order to for us to know what you're specifically interested in. Uh, we will take your comments over time and weave them in in producing more content on this channel. Thank you. Have a nice day.